Let me start with a quick question. Are there any people who are your friends right now, but who you did not like when you first met them? Okay, hey, look, don't point them out if they're in the room, all right? Yeah, listen, that's actually a pretty common thing. In fact, you probably have some friends that didn't like you when they first met you, think about that. And maybe it's not that they disliked you, they just didn't understand you. They thought that you were strange or stuck up or rude or annoying. And then they spent time with you and realized that there's more to the story, that you weren't the person they originally thought you were, that you're actually a fantastic human being. Okay, that's what we're talking about in this series because the reality is there are some topics that we possibly all had some impressions of or opinions about. The way we see things are, you know, maybe slightly off or twisted or just plain wrong. There's more we need to understand. In other words, there's more to the story. There are topics that you expect to talk about in church, right? Topics like prayer and love and the Bible and it makes total sense. And then there are things that you don't expect to talk about at church, like NFL football or Harry Styles or streaming content on Twitch or how to get more TikTok followers. Today, we're gonna talk about Harry Styles. I'm kidding, okay? But we are going to talk about a topic that you don't expect to talk about in church. Are you ready? We're talking about porn. Now, maybe you're surprised I just said that. <gasps> or maybe you just rolled your eyes because straight up you're like, it's not a big deal. Or maybe you're acting disgusted right now to keep your church image intact. But whether or not you think it's a problem, here are a few things you should know. Depending on what kind of music you listen to, you hear references to things that are somewhat pornographic on a pretty consistent basis. It doesn't seem like a big deal when artists like DaBaby or Cardi B rap about it or when a comedian jokes about it. Why is it such a big deal that I'm talking about it? If you watch TV, movies, Netflix, Hulu, etc., you've possibly seen things that could be labeled as porn. Just because it wasn't an X-rated website on your phone doesn't mean that it didn't have undertones of porn or pornographic imagery. I'm not saying that to make you feel guilty if you've looked at it. I'm just trying to make a point that this topic isn't as foreign and far away as you may possibly think. The average age of exposure to porn is 11 years old. So we're talking about something that is already affecting someone around you. And by no means am I assuming that all of you have had encounters with porn. I'm just making a point that this is a preteen thing, a teenage thing, and an adult thing. This affects everyone on the planet who has access to the internet. And if something affects everyone on the planet, we feel like it's okay and maybe even necessary to talk about it. Now, if you're new to church and a little shocked that we're talking about this, I totally get it. And don't worry, you know, we'll get back to topics like praying and reading the Bible to make you feel more at ease at church, right? I'm kidding. I know this topic isn't easy, but here's something that I would love for all of you to get today. We're not just affected by porn. We're actually influenced by the culture of porn. And here's what I mean. This is not something that could potentially tempt some of us. This is not something that just affects some of us. This is something that influences all of us. Why? Because porn culture is all around us. Snapchat and sexting, movies, music, advertisements, conversations, apps, etc. It's everywhere. Plus the porn industry generates $12 billion a year. Billion. That's more than the combined annual revenues of ABC, NBC, and CBS all combined. It's around us all the time, and it's impossible to spend time around something and not be affected by it. See, when it comes down to it, porn is sexualized content designed to get a specific response. A lot of people start watching porn because they're curious. So it's kind of like sex education, right? The problem is that porn was never designed to educate you. It was designed to hook you and make you addicted. It was designed to manipulate you. We're being influenced by something that's teaching us a fake education. And what's interesting is that you and I are typically quick to see right through things that aren't legitimate. For example, got this bag right here. How many of you love fast food, right? Okay, no one's mad at you if you do and no one's mad at you if you don't. Let's say that a fast food manager came here and talked about eating healthy. And he or she talked only about things like eating Big Macs and French fries and McFlurries none of you would fall for it as delicious as those things are, right? You'd see right through it. You'd be like, why are we allowing this person to teach us about healthy nutrition? Going to porn is like going to McDonald's to eat healthy. It would actually have reverse effects. Going to porn for sex or sex education is the same. It has reverse effects and can actually hurt you, okay? Now I'm getting this bag out of here because it smells bad. 
The truth is that there's more to the story. And that's what we're gonna talk about for the next few minutes. See, there's a book in the Bible called Proverbs. And the Bible is actually a collection of books and it's split into two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Old Testament are basically books before Jesus walked the earth and the New Testament are the books after. Proverbs is in the Old Testament and it's a book of poetry that is primarily about wisdom, which simply means truths that make your life better. Now these Proverbs were written, written by an ancient king named Solomon who was famously known as an extremely wise person. So what does an ancient king have to say that would be relevant to our lives now? Now, some of Proverbs may seem confusing, but a lot of it actually makes sense in the lives of teenagers and adults alike. For example, the verse we're gonna look at today says this, the simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. Simple is basically naive. For example, a simple person believes everything they read online. They think every science experiment works like they see on TikTok. They fall for any prank because they're easily tricked. They're gullible, they believe anything. And when it comes to porn, maybe you've heard or even thought statements like this. It's not hurting anyone. There are worse things I could be doing. I'm not actually doing anything, I just look. At least I'm not having sex with a real person. See, we've been naive when it comes to porn. We've believed everything. But hear this, porn never tells the whole story. Let me say that again. Porn never tells the whole story. There's a website called fightthenewdrug.org and they've compiled decades of study from respected institutions about pornography. And their website has assembled over a thousand articles related to the subject. And here are some of the research facts that they've discovered. Studies have found that porn use is correlated with less sexual and relationship satisfaction. People are less pleased or satisfied. Frequent exposure to pornography is associated with believing that it's possible to have high sexual satisfaction without having affection for one's partner. Frequent exposure to pornography is associated with less trust in intimate partners. The sex acts shown in pornography are unrealistic. They're often abusive. Studies have found that porn use is correlated with lower quality of life and poor health. Even moderate porn use is correlated with damage to parts of the brain involved with motivation and decision making. Compulsive pornography users are at risk for depression and stress. We could go on and on with stats like this. The point is porn doesn't tell you facts like this when you look at it. It wants you to be distracted and addicted. It doesn't want you to have a full, complete life. Consider this, porn will not make you better at sex. It won't. It might actually make you worse because it damages your relationships. Porn will not make sex better for you. It will actually make it less desirable because it doesn't give you realistic expectations of sex. Porn will not help you understand what sex is like. It will actually confuse you and lead you further away from understanding it. See. God isn't against porn because he thinks that the act of sex is bad. He's anti-porn because pornography has twisted what he intended sex to be. He is anti-porn because it devalues people that he cares about, which is, hey, everybody, it's everyone. He's anti-porn because it's bad for you and it's bad for other people. God is a 100% loving God and there is absolutely nothing loving about pornography. The second part of the verse says this, the prudent give thoughts to their steps. This means that a person evaluates information carefully so that they don't fall into a trap. And that's exactly what porn is. It's a trap. It's a trap that wants something from you and me. It wants our time, our attention, our money, addiction, on and on it goes. And in exchange, it gives us a false sense of sexual closeness. See, culture doesn't tell you that because they don't see it themselves. A prudent person is basically someone who is wise. And many, many years after Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament, a man named Paul wrote a letter that became part of the New Testament. And he wrote to a group of people that he loved. He cared about them a lot. And he said this, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. When Paul says, be very careful, it's similar to Solomon saying, give thoughts to your steps. Don't believe everything you hear. Like porn doesn't tell you the whole story. When you're being manipulated, hey, step the other way. Be prudent, 
Be wise, get yourself away from something that is so destructive to you. And now it would be crazy for someone to teach us about being healthy from a menu at a fast food restaurant, right? You and I, we would see right through that. We need to have the same mentality when it comes to porn culture. There are lots of steps we could all take, but for the sake of today, we're gonna focus on two. Number one, refuse to be fooled. Train your brain. When you see the ad, the Snapchat, argue with it, question it. What is this thing trying to sell me? What is this thing trying to convince me to do? You're adults, you're smart. You see through so many things that are fake, so many th things that are manipulative. You have to access those same smarts when it comes to porn culture. Remember, it's everywhere and it wants something from you and from me. It doesn't care about you. It doesn't want what's best for you. It wants to trap you. So be wise, be smart, you already are. Be careful in this, this is a big deal. Refuse to participate. Create a plan to set yourself up for success before you even reach the trap. Think ahead, what will you do when you come across pornographic content? What will you do when you're tempted to believe the lies of porn culture? How will you put a stop to the manipulations? Sometimes it isn't enough to know that you're being tricked. You need help to get unmanipulated. Maybe you need to take concrete action. Maybe you need to put some restrictions around your access to technology. If an industry, listen, if an industry makes $12 billion a year, you can believe that is very persuasive and very convincing. Remember, it is a trap and it's not possible to get out of every trap by yourself. So talk to a trusted adult, talk to your small group leader, let them know what's going on. It may be that you have some things you need to confess, get off your shoulders. It may be that you need to ask them for some accountability. They need to check in with you from time to time. We need each other to help fight against an industry that is so big and powerful. None of us wanna be a part of something that manipulates us. We don't wanna associate with something that hurts us. We don't wanna associate with something that hurts other people, we're smart. We don't wanna be controlled, but porn culture, it's sneaky. And now that we've named that, now that we've talked about that, we can open our eyes. We can see it for what it is and we can step the other way and imagine if we did. How liberating would it be to move forward without being trapped by something that's so destructive to so many people? We would hurt ourselves less, we would hurt others less, and that is a very, very big deal. Porn never tells the whole story. On the other hand, we have a God who loves us immensely and out of his love for us, he wants good things for us. He wants to see us thrive, not suffer. Porn is hurtful and damaging. God wants better for us. He has given us incredible minds to see through the lies and incredible wills to walk away. So choose wisdom. I am begging you, choose wisdom. Be proactive. Be willing to have hard conversations because this, my friends, is worth the fight.